it's interesting too as I will um, walk you through some things today I will start out by saying what the president would normally say and it really when he would say it sometimes it was not true but I'm telling you the state of the ministry is good amen, amen. amen. are you with me it is good, and it is good from a tremendously spiritual perspective. And and so I'm going to walk you through, though, the state of the, 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 the church world um, opposed to the state of the ecclesia. I can tell you the state of the church world is not good. Okay. Um, and that's why we must function from a place of the ecclesia. Okay? Um, if you will take note today and listen to me closely, I think you will learn some things maybe you did not have in your, your psyche or your, your knowledge, but it's going to increase you. What I will tell you, though, is that the first part, and you got to stay with me, the first part of this message don't feel good. Okay, because you're going to have to look in the face of what's wrong. And there's a lot wrong. We're in the hour. In a new year, we're in the hour that God designed for us. When you you may want to write that down somewhere. You are you are in the hour that God designed for you. Now, a lot of folk may not understand that, but God made this time and birthed you for this hour. Now, again, the things that are going on in this hour don't always make us happy, but you are equipped for it. Are uh, you hear me? I have been questioning the Lord about some some things as far as some people, not that they were in error or anything, but why had he taken them out of the earth? I'm saying, God, why are you taking these soldiers out of the earth? Why are they leaving? Because in my mind, in my mind, we could use them. Uh, you follow what I'm talking about? We we need we need some of these soldiers that I'm seeing exit doing exit stage right here. And I says, okay, Lord, what are you doing with this? Um, and it's interesting. Um, I think what I think is happening. This is just me. I think he's removing from you and removing from many of us some of the things that would keep us from walking in the destiny that he's designed for you. And with some of these leaders in place, we will let them lead and we'll watch whether, rather than getting engaged and knowing what we're supposed to do. Many of these leaders have um, blazed tremendous trails and got tremendous fruit. And uh, so they're not going to lose out on anything. But at the same time, many of those that watch them are not moving in the places and the things that they should move in. Yes. Uh, are y'all hearing me yes. with that? And I want you, first of all, go to Psalms 118 and 24. Chris, we'll see if I have a wisdom encouraging there, please, and get it from me if you will. Psalms 118 and 24 says, This is the day which the Lord has made. Come on, somebody. We will rejoice and be glad in that day. In that day, which is the it. Is that right? This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, we will rejoice and be glad in that day that God has made. Yes. Uh -huh. Now you you need to ask the psalmist, what day are you talking about? Because there are a lot of days. 
So if you're talking about a, a, a particular day, what day are you talking about? And the truth of the matter is, he's not talking about a particular chronological day. Okay, right? He's not talking about a chronological day because, you know, I grew up singing this song. Come on, come on, somebody. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord and, and we all thought Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yes. Come on, a, amen. Yes. Or even the Sunday that we were singing it. We were thinking about that day that we were singing it. That's not the day he was dealing with, and this is not the day he made. The day he made was the eighth day. So God has created a new day for the body of Christ to live in. Okay? Um, on that cross, he closed that day that was not closed in Genesis. The day that never was closed in Genesis is the seventh day. There is no, the, 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 the evening in the morning is the seventh day. Every other day had the evening in the morning attached to it, which closed that day and opened up a new one. Okay, come on. But in this case, there is no evening in the morning. It's the seventh day. And I, don't th I think, according to my study, again, this is me, but I think that Jesus closed it on the cross when he said, it is finished. You know, when he said it is finished, I think he closed out the seventh. And the word that he used there also means the creation of something new. And so I believe that he opened up the new day. I also believe, as I've told you, and again, I'm just recapping some things for you real quick in your mind. I also think that the, the cock crowing is the understanding of the new day dawning. Okay. And so... So, so Peter's denying of him was in the, the day that he was closing so that Peter could enter into that new day. But Peter denied him in the seventh, but the new day dawned when the cock crow. Oh, y'all ain't happy me. You ain't gonna help me. Are you, are you tracking that? And so you're in an eighth day, and we've gone through eighth day training during the new year, remember? We've gone eighth day training and all of that kind of stuff and understanding the eighth day. Re and, and God pointed to this eight all over the Bible. Everywhere he pointed to this eighth day. Eighth day the child is circumcised. Okay, eighth, eighth, come on. Eighth day, eight, eight souls saved on the, on the ark. Eight, eight, every, eight everywhere. Eight at the end of the feast, the last feast. God, an eighth day um, um, Sabbath. Uh, or or um, 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 solemn feast at the end of the the seven, and then you get another, you get a Sabbath, an eighth day Sabbath. Well, that's the rest that the, the writer of Hebrews was talking about. That you are to live in the rest of the Lord. He said, if he had given rest to Joshua, he would not have spoken of another day. And that next day was the eighth day that he opened up for you. Now, many in the body of Christ. Don't know what I'm talking about. They've never heard this. Never heard nothing but no day that's created. This is a day, is a chronological day, but it's not. It is a Kairos day. It's a Kairos day to live in that place with God. There is, a, there is an opening, and this, and I'll talk about it later in my message a little bit, but this week we will start in understanding how to get into this place through the training that we will go through over the next three weeks. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for the fast. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. We're going to give some of the fat to the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to give him some of it. Amen. And so, so this is that day. And then again, the psalmist says, what? We, we're going to rejoice in this day and we're going to be glad in this day because God made this day. Now, now again, it is, it is an amazing thing. So, so everything associated with Jesus, again, I'm just giving you a review. This is not, this is not a message yet, but is everything that's associated with Jesus name is an, is a multiple of eight. Is, is just amazing to see that every name is a multiple of eight. Savior, Christ, Lord, Jesus himself, the numerical value is 888. 
So now, come on. Everything is an eighth day reality. The question we got to ask ourselves, are we living in that day? God made this day, but are we living in that day? Are we, or are we consumed in the chronological days? See? Are we consumed in the chronological days so that we're not living in the day that the Lord has made? I tell you this, all your blessings, all of your increase is in the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all must have stayed up late last night. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> yes, he made all things new, preacher. That's right. Now, what, this, what you need to understand is that this day that we're talking about is beyond the court area of the tabernacle into the holy place. And we will, again, this week, next week, and so on, we will go through some of that to understand it. But it's not any out of court. This is not any out of court. It's not an out of court experience. And that's the reason why most have missed it. Because they have not pursued God beyond the out of court. And you might know him really well in the outer court, but there's two more levels. Hello, to know God. Amen? Um, <laughs> so, what I, what I see is that we are right now, we are as a people, as the body of Christ, we're in the most interesting time in human history. More of Bible prophecy uh, is coming to pass now than any other time in history. We you know, many, many times they have said Jesus was coming. For years and years and years and years, Jesus is on his way. And they, and they were right. He was. But it was not close because there were too many things still not fulfilled. Okay? I told you several weeks ago in, in, in some messages, just by the embassy being moved from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem should get you ready for the coming of the Lord. That had never happened, and everybody was saying that Jesus was coming, but by, by the Trump administration moving that embassy, that sped up the timeline. It is amazing, the timeline in that, and you have to watch Israel. And then I told you that we now have red heifers. We got five red heifers, waiting for sacrifice and we are at a point that this this Abrahamic peace accord again done by the Trump administration this Abrahamic peace accord is the thing that is ushering in this this new era because they are saying that it's okay to build this new temple now again we're not talking politics we're talking factual information that is in your Bible. That if your Bible is true, these things had to happen. But the question was, who was going to do it? No one had the inner fortitude or courage to make these moves. And so through that, through that administration, that was done. Okay? That was done. And so now they're talking about building this third temple. Now, when that temple is built, and that's why these red heifers are so important, because now the priest can be sanctified and, and, and cleansed ceremonially, proper based on the scripture. Before that time, there were no red heifers. <laughs> so everybody saying Jesus is coming, can't come till we get some red heifers. Can't come till we get some red heifers. Well, you see the red heifers. Bible prophecy is being fulfilled. Now the question is, what do you do with Bible prophecy being fulfilled? You're going to do one or two things. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to say, I don't want to look at it, put your head in the ground, and don't want to view it. Okay? Are you with me? Or you're going to follow along so you can get prepared and get ready for it. But there are a lot of people that bury burying their head in the ground. They don't even want to talk about this stuff because it scares them. Now let me say something to you. Again, I, what statement I made to you? What was the first statement I made to you? What was the first statement I made of you? This is going to be hard. And then I told you about you. What did I tell you about you? You were made for this time. So how are you made for this time and you think God's going to have fear on you? You're not made for this time and God's going to desert you. He didn't make you for this time so that you could do it yourself. 
He made you for this time so that he could use you and work through you and be with you. Yes. Come on, amen? Yes. So that's why you made for this time. So it don't make no difference. I don't care what I see. I'm excited about what I see. I'm celebrating what I see. Why? Because, hey, I'm here for this time. Yes. For such a time as this is the estamentality. Okay, are y'all with me here? Yes. Okay. And so, um, so it's, 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 I, I wrote here in my notes so that I wouldn't forget this, but many things that we read about but didn't understand how they would happen is now here. Many things that we read about, um, such as, um, you know, we talked about everybody taking the mark of the beast. Well, we, we didn't know how that actually would happen. Basically, every time we saw it, somebody was marking a barcode on somebody's hand or on somebody's head. But that was as far as we could get to it because that's all we knew. Yeah. But I can tell you that people are chipped right now. Yeah. There are people walking around with chips in their, in their hands right now that actually gets them into their buildings, um, buy things from the, the, the drink machines or snack machines. And so their money is attached to this chip on their hand. And that's how they are functioning. And so that chip we knew years ago, years ago, years ago, years ago, one of the things I used to tell my students in electronics is that the two long bars, that you got two long bars on the outside of a barcode, two long bars in the middle of the barcode, two long bars on the outside of the barcode. Each one of those long long ones, when you look at the barcode, is 666. It's a 6, it's a 6, it's a 6. And most people, again, they wouldn't have no clue about that. Because they don't understand, they never studied the barcode. But those were, those long, look at the barcode and you'll see those, those lines. Have anybody ever seen them? Ain't nobody, ain't nobody, sh you're shaking your head, everyone. You got one shaking the head. Antoine, you know about that? You know a little bit about that, don't you? That's right. So, so most people don't know that, okay? So to put the chip in your hand, you don't have to put a, 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 they don't have to put a barcode on your hand. The chip is the barcode. Because it's functioning under some electronic system, dot, 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 okay? So, Again, we'll be, able to, we'll be able to chip your dog, we'll be able to chip your cat, we'll be able to chip you, and nobody, if, if we chip you, nobody could ever take you. Because why? We can always find you. Is that making any sense? Okay, so, so the snatching of children will immediately decrease. Snatching of women for human traffic stuff will instantly decrease. Look at all this good stuff. See what I'm talking about? Yes. But remember the tree that's in the garden. What is the tree name? Which one they couldn't eat from? The, 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 the tree of the knowledge of. So that tree not only had good on it, it also had. Ah. See? It's a two sided coin. It's not one tree that is not a good tree and then an evil tree. Come on. It's a tree that if you eat the fruit, you ate both of them. You now gain the knowledge of the good and the evil at the same time, which took you out of the place of righteousness. I'm preaching better than y'all responding to me. Y'all stayed up too long last night. I can tell right now, you ain't, you ain't in there with the brother right now. Come on, get here. I'm going to preach you in the, into the heavens right now. You understand that? And so all I've got to do is get you to eat from that tree. I got you. And so the enemy always shows you the good of anything. Before he shows you the evil of it. So his strategy is that you would see the good and go, oh, I need this. This is good. This will, this will change so many things and, and it's for the good. And they don't ever come to you about the evil. They don't ever tell you what they're planning behind the scenes. Are you with me? By the way, the WEF, which is the World Economic Forum, has set up two offices in Michigan. Two. One in Detroit and I believe one in Troy, I think. I know one is in Detroit. And they're talking about all the economic stuff they can bring to the city of Detroit. And I'm, and I'm reading all of these politicians and all of these leaders who are saying how good this is going to be for Detroit. They haven't studied the World Economic Forum. They don't understand what um, Car Swab is up to. Because they are looking at only the good. They don't know the evil that's behind it. 
but you will own nothing and be happy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how that's. I don't know how. I don't know how that's good. But you will own nothing and be happy. And so it's interesting that they have said of in, in Detroit. It's really interesting that they've said of in Detroit. Um, again, my second home. So we we're gonna absolutely come against that foolishness. Amen. Amen. So well, the other thing that we've learned is I'm giving you the state of the ministry address, ladies and gentlemen. Knowledge is increasing That's right. at an alarming rate. Mm -hmm. And I told you this some years ago. Now the AI technology is crazy. Okay? And the AI technology has already exceeded human capabilities. Elon Musk has said we have already passed the point of, of no return. Did you hear what that? Did you hear that? Now, this guy who's sending rockets up into this, matter of fact, he said they're going to launch. Did he say, did he say, I, man, I think he said 50. He may have said more. Rockets this year, they're going to launch that many um, this year. This guy who sends rockets into the, into the heavens and bring them back down and set them back on the same pad they left from, when NASA has never done that. That's why they don't like Musk, man. Musk is smart, man. But AI is amazing, especially what we're finding out in Japan and all of that. Um, the AI dolls that they have now are so lifelike, and they are men are buying dolls rather than dealing with women. And they have an AI doll, and the doll, you know why? Because the doll don't talk bad. Hey, 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 hey. The dog don't the dog don't talk back. Yep, yeah, and the and the dog's not giving you no the dog's not giving you no assignments. And the doll is fully functional. Did you hear what I just told you? And the dog can't get pregnant, but the doll is fully functional. There are places in Japan that you can go into a hotel and not meet a human. That, 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 that a, a AI will check you in. A AI will take you to your room. And take your bags up. Y'all ain't gonna help me. <laughs> They're already way past us in technology. And it is, it is, it is, it is serious. But you were born. I ain't getting no help from y'all. I said, come on, help me with this statement. You were born for what? Such a time as this. And there's nothing here that is going to overwhelm you because you've been sent here for this time. <laughs> We've come through the worst pandemic we come through the worst pandemic that we've seen in centuries. Um, I, I, again, I, I don't have a problem with this, please. And, and, and Prissy got one on right now. I don't, I don't have a problem with people with masks on. I think they should wear them. Um, but now it's strange to see somebody with one on. Isn't it? Now you walk around and you see somebody with a mask, you're going to go, oh, yeah, right. That's what that we did have them on, didn't we? Come on, come on, come on, come on. One time you went into a store, come on. Everybody had a mask on, right? You know, I was with a, a friend of mine told me, he said, him and his son walked in the store, and his son looked at him and says, Dad, you understand two black men are in this store with masks on, ain't nobody arresting us. <laughs> that was funny. That was absolutely true. Everybody got a mask everywhere. Now you can't find a mask because we've come through that pandemic. But did we come through the pandemic? You see, the pandemic had a design. And the design of the pandemic was, 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 was successful. Why was it successful? Because they shut down the world. I want you to hear me. They shut down the world.
the entire world was shut down. Come, are y'all hearing me? Come on. And 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 recently, you, again, our news don't pick all this stuff up or talk about it. But Japan, they were rioting in the streets because Japan tried to shut them down again. I'm sorry, China, China. I'm sorry, China. China. China shut them down again because of another outbreak, and they rioted. They went into in the streets and was rioting so that they would be able to come out of their homes. Okay. Again, most of us. Again, if you're not following other news than than the, the American news, you may not catch all of that. And so they were they were they were rioting, but they shut us down. They took us out of our churches. They shut us down. They took us out of everything and shut us down. Come on. And the online services had a windfall. <laughs> and if you had known to, before that to put stock in Zoom, you would have been kind of rich. But there were a lot of people that made money. Did you know that? I, I, you got to follow the money. There was a lot of money made during the pandemic by the people who knew the pandemic was coming. Let me say this so, so you're going to understand something. In, in 2019, in 2019, I told you the first part of this one will feel good. Didn't I tell you that? Yes, I did tell you all that, didn't I? Okay, good. So, so, so I, I warned you. So 2019, the G20 had a meeting about pandemics. Okay? In 2020, you had the pandemic. Yes. Okay? What you may not know that in November of this year, of last year, now, the 20 met again. And they met about another pandemic. Yes. Wow. That they are projecting 2025. Yes. They have a name for it and everything. Okay? And they say this pandemic will be like polio. And that it will harm a lot of children. Not only, not only adults. Because again, remember, COVID pretty much skipped over the children. Okay, it, it did. They, you see, but they still try to in, vaccinate them. But children was really not getting COVID at that level and dying. Okay, right. And the folk that were dying from COVID really were people that had health issues. Most of the folk that died from COVID, not everybody, but most of them had health health issues. Okay, and they were. Uh, uh, elderly or had some kind of issue of their health, and so that's why they, they most of them died. Okay, not everybody, but but the majority. So, if 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 that's the if that's the facts, if that's right, you, you got about two more years that you may be dealing with what another pandemic. The pandemic, then oh, they have they have done mock interviews, they've done mock run-ups on this thing they have run this thing through as though it's real with with tv um announcements and everything it's it's just amazing so listen to me guys so if they, if that's right you may have about two years to prepare yourself for what could be coming but what are they trying to do again the same thing they did in the first one then they already found out that it works we can shut you down we can control the entire world through a health issue. Are you hearing me? But I, some, I, again, I'm telling you, you were born and you are here for what? Such a, time as this. Such a time as this. You are here for now. You are here for right now. Okay? So, researchers are looking at your church world. And the, please, so that's where I want you to go. Ed, researchers are all over this thing. There was one brother named um, Jim Finney. Finney. He is, he's done a tremendous amount of research um, on the church. And, and he found eight things exist right now in the current world of the church. There are eight things, and I want you to take note of all these eight, and I want you to also not only take note of them, I want you to grade yourself as we go through this. First of all, he found that there is a famine in the Word of God. He says there's a famine. He says a famine which meets the criteria of Amos 8 and 1. 81 says, the days are coming, declared the sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land, not a famine of food or a thirst for water. 
but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. Are y'all here with me? A famine of the word. Now, again, I don't, I don't want to interject in each of these with us right now, but I do want you to understand we don't have that problem. Hallelujah. And, and come on, hello, somebody. No, 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 no. We don't. We, 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 we're not. Well, that's not us. Yeah. Hallelujah. The second thing that he found. Oh, he 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 went to he went to about eight different con congregations across a broad spectrum of things and his conclusions came up with t and to meet the same criteria that George Bonner and all of the other researchers are finding about this thing right here that we do call church okay two me centered worship me centered worship that the worship is about me more than it is unto God. The songs, the songs are about me. How God's going to bless me. How God's going to take care of me rather than what you sung this morning. You, what did you sing this morning? You sung about worshiping God. Yeah. Holy are you, Lord. Yes, Come on, your focus was not on what you could get. It was on him completely. Okay? It's difficult to find those songs. <laughs> it is very difficult to find those songs, which says there is a need for Tiffany to write them. Jesus. Why, why did she go to Liberty to get this degree? You know what I'm saying? You know, if you ain't going to be writing the songs that people sing, I write the song. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just, I'm sorry. My brain, it just, every once in a while, my banner, my very man came out on me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Antoine, did you, no, did you hear that? Don't. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Twan. Me centered worship. Not only me centered worship, performance centered worship. Performance centered worship, concert centered worship. Yes. It's about having a concert at church. Yes. It's about the smoke, the lights. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't about Jesus. Okay, that's what he found. Okay. Gifts of the Spirit rarely seen operating. Gifts of the Spirit rarely seen operating. You 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 in these you, you in these churches, big, small, middle, make no difference. You don't see nobody talking about the gifts of the spirit, and they're and they're not functioning. Hello, somebody. The sick are not prayed for in the service. Nobody praying for the sick in the service. Nobody's because why? If the gifts are not functioning, why well, I'm praying for the sick? Okay. This one right here is really interesting. He says, body ministry is absent. Focus is on the pastor. <laughs> Told you you won't feel good the first part. Come on. Number six. Very little corporate prayer. Very little corporate prayer. Wow. Hmm. This one right here is really serious because I I not thought about this one myself that we needed it seriously again but because we used to do this all the time. But number seven says no testimonies. Ain't no testimonies. Ain't no testimony service. We used to call it what? No, no. What we used to call it up in here? Bragging on Jesus. We used to call it bragging on Jesus. We're going to brag on Jesus. You got to get back to bragging on Jesus. Amen. And, la and lastly, divine power not experienced. That the power of God is not coming into the church, overtaking your church. Again, we had a young man come here, um, got somewhat offended at my message. He did. He got somewhat, somewhat offended at my message, said it was a little, he said my, he said my message was dark. 
I can't tell you the church he, he go to, but they they got some orange and white colors. But and um, I'm not. I'm, I did not. Did, I ain't calling by name, did I? I did not. Did I? Okay. So there's a church he went to, and what he what he said. What he said was that in order for the people to feel like the spirit of God was in the place, because he was working in the sound ministry, he said they would cut the air down so that the people would be a little chilly, so they would feel like the Lord was moving in the place. Out of his mouth, but my message was dark. While the smoke is going and the lights are flickering. But my message was a little dark. I said, that's pretty interesting. He said, so, so when, you know, when a good song is going along, that's what they do. They will change the temperature in the room so that people will feel like it was God moving. That's sad, isn't it? Okay. All right, so <laughs> told you it won't feel good the first part. Reading the Bible is really, really <laughs> reading the Bible. Generation Z, twenty one percent. Millennials, twenty four percent. Gen X, twenty two percent. Baby Boomers, seventeen percent. This last generation, silent generation, nineteen percent. That's how. That's that's the percentage of the people in those generations in this gen, those generations reading the Bible. Let me say that to you again. Let you let you hear this one more one more again. Generation Z, twenty one percent. Millennials, twenty four percent. Generation X, twenty two percent. Baby Boomers, seventeen percent. <laughs> Silent generation, nineteen percent. Reading the Bible. In, so I'm standing in many places, I'm standing in many places looking at folk worshiping, hands up, bowing, and, and I'm going, what are you worshiping? You don't know who you're worshiping? You ain't in the word of God. But there is this thing, there, 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 is this, there is what I call the prophets at Jericho syndrome. Now, <laughs> the, the prophets at Jericho, no, Jer yeah, Jericho. The prophets at Jericho were the ones who saw Elijah and Elisha go across the Jordan. Okay? The prophets at Jericho were the ones who saw Elijah and Elisha go across the Jordan. The prophets of Jericho, Jericho were the ones who told Elisha when he came back across the Jordan by himself that they should go up into the mountains and find Elijah. They made Elisha stay there three days while they went into the mountains searching for Elijah. Now let me ask you something. Where were the prophets of Jericho when the Lord took Elijah up on the other side of the Jordan? They were not at the place that the thing happened. Are y'all hear me? So if you're not there, how are you going to now tell me where he is? You don't know. But they act like they knew. Yeah, hear me. People who don't read their Bible know more about the Word of God, know more about what you're supposed to do in God than anybody that I ever seen in my life. And they're not reading. How you know what to do? And they will tell somebody that's reading what to do. So let me go back down this list of these generations again. Unaffiliations with the with any religious sect, unaffiliated with anything, um, um, thirty four percent, which is one third of the of, of the gen the generation Z's, thirty four percent are unaffiliated with any religious sect. 
one third. The millennials are pretty much right there too. They're 29 percent. The Gen Xs are 25 percent unaffiliated. The baby boomers are 18 percent, and that makes sense to me because we pretty much grew up in church. And silent generation is nine percent unaffiliated. Now it's interesting too because Bonner, George Bonner dealt with worship, especially what has happened after COVID. Okay? So check this out. Weekly worship attendance among the U.S. millennials more than doubled from 2021 to 2022. Now this is really important according to Bonner's, uh, George Bonner's research. Okay? Um, they were at 21% in the 2022 and it rose to 25% in 2020 and then it went all the way, it has jumped all the way up from 2021 to 39% this year. The last year, the millennials came back to church. Okay? Interesting, isn't it? Yes. They came back to church. And I think the reason for that is they have found out something. They found out everything they were looking for ain't working. I think they done come to the realization ain't none of this stuff working. Come on. Come on, my, my millennials in the house. Ain't nobody saying amen to a brother. <laughs> it, 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 ain't, it ain't working like we thought it was going to All right? Now, them Gen X people, they still having problems. Some of the, <laughs> it rose a little bit. The Gen X rose a little bit, but most of them are still having some problems. So Bonner is saying also, as I said to you, watch this. Wait a minute. You are born for what? You are. So let me tell you something. Listen to me close, ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen and ladies. Listen to this. Okay. People come to church. You, get, you, you write down eight. Okay. They come to church three Sundays out of eight. That's the average across America now. Three Sundays out of eight. They don't come all eight anymore. Why? That right there. And that right there came about more because of what? The pandemic. So we didn't know. There are certain things that happened that we didn't know how they would happen. We didn't know the falling away would be in, re in, 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 in response to something like a pandemic where, and there are folk in this study that says, we're never going back to church. They said, we're never going back in there. We don't have to. Well, we have a smorgasbord out here. We can look at anybody we want online. And we don't have to be a part of their church. We ain't got to give them no money. We don't have to be dedicated to anything they say. Hello, you're born for such a time as this. Then, because there is a famine of the word... Listen to me close, guys. Because there's a famine of the word, I believe that God has set us up and set many that have a desire to teach the word of God. Has set us up in such a place, in a way, that we can reach more people than we've ever reached before. There is a harvest field now that is not a field of the unknown. It's a field of the known. There is a field of, that can be harvest of people who know of God come on, been around the things of God that we can reach with the truth of God who have not heard the truth. If we don't reach him, somebody's going to. Did you hear what I just told you? Somebody's going to reach them with some kind of truth. Okay? And so in, 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 here, in here, what have we been focusing on? We've been focusing on the pew and body ministry. I can tell you, come on, the pew and body ministry. The, the thing that we focus on is pew and the body ministry. So, listen, I don't want you, and I have said it so many times, it is not about me. Come on, is that right? Get your eyes off of me. Don't be, don't be focused on me. It's more about what you do and how God is using you than what God is doing in me. Is that, is that making any sense right now? 
Okay? Okay. So we've empowered you, and we've also empowered you um, based on what? The net and all of that kind of stuff. Again, the net is so that we can empower you. I, have, I don't know a lot of places. I don't know a lot of places that, that do this, that will allow their young adults to govern themselves. I don't know a lot. You, you need to know, again, that we've got two groups of young adults that do not have a governmental leader over them. That is not, that's not in their meetings. That's not trying to tell them what to do. Letting them figure it out themselves. There's not a lot of places you're going to find that. Where they are, they are doing well um, working it together. Okay, so we got Selah. Glory to God. Amen. Selah. Come on. All right. And we got who else with, with your group name? Shalom. All dots in between. So you got Shalom and you got Selah. So you got these two groups that's functioning in this house that's governing themselves. That's deciding what they're going to study. All of that. And why, why did I do that? Why in the world would I do that? Because you don't, you don't let these people be, be to themselves. <laughs> you don't let any people to be to themselves. Man. You, you can't trust that. Because somebody's going to take over eventually. Come on, y'all hear me? Why did I do that? I did that because, come on, if you're going to be, if you're going to depend on the leaders the rest of your life to now to now lead you and govern you, you will not become the leaders I need you to be. So these young people need to become leaders in the house, and how better to learn than them lead to help lead themselves? Is it, y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? They're governmental leaders over everything, except those two groups. Except those two groups. I said, no, y'all gotta, y'all gotta function. So they, they do all of their stuff together. It's so, it's so, it's so awesome to watch. It's so awesome to watch. So when we talk about the word, again, starting to, um, um, Tuesday night, as you know, starting on Tuesday night, we will have our, our, our fast training. We're on this, on this Daniel fast for 21 days. And so we start on Tuesday night, the third, and we go Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and for three weeks. Now, again, I, I, I've, I've, I've polled my friends. I polled a lot of folk. I have not seen that. There are not a lot of folk doing that. There are not a lot of folks that are going to get the commitment out of the house where the people are going to participate. Yes. That they're going to be in place to participate. Listen, guys, we got to listen. You, okay, Bishop Boone told me something a while ago. So this is state of ministry, guys. This is what he told me. He says, Jackson, I want you to realize something. You must help the people understand what they have. I never even thought about it. He said, because they will have it and not view it. Why? They're too close to the forest to see the trees. He says, they won't know what they have. You got to sometimes tell them. And it's not, it's not a pride thing that you tell them. But you got to let them know what God has done in the midst of them. By the way, listen, none of this stuff could work if it wasn't for the Lord. Hello. This ain't my greatness. <laughs> the, the thing is, I don't sit around scheming. You know what I'm saying? I don't sit around planning, trying to figure out how, what can I get to do. I'm trying to hear and give. Are you with me? And the reason why I'm up 3.30 in the morning, most mornings, trying to hear from the Lord, what are you saying, not only for me, but for this whole body?